the Coast Guard knows what can happen when least expected. July 4th at 2 a.m., the first flare went off, and we were literally sitting 13 miles off of Havana watching about 4,000 people come right at us. And we sent out the call, we said, we have a mass migration. And the Coast Guard surged his fleet. Everything that could float uh, went down to Cuba. We picked up that particular day uh, 805 migrants on a 270-foot ship. In that summer of 1994, the Navy and Coast Guard interdicted more than 30,000 Cuban migrants in the Florida Straits as part of Operation Able Vigil. Just months before, the Coast Guard faced another mass exodus. This time, they picked up more than 25,000 Haitian migrants in Operation Able Manor. It's tough to apply to a formula to it, but a 65-foot Haitian freighter, we came across one that was sinking. And unfortunately, there was a Navy ship on scene at the time, and we took uh, 506 people off a 65-foot boat, which is, it's tremendous. You can't, you can't imagine something like that. And if we had not been on scene, if the Coast Guard and, and our Navy partners hadn't been on scene, they would have died, absolutely, because there's no one out there to rescue them. Um, there's no rafts, there's no uh, life preservers, anything like that. So they, they would have sunk and no one would have heard from them. So it's, it's a humanitarian crisis on, on a massive scale. There were hundreds of lessons learned in the wake of Operations Able Vigil and Able Manor. There was even a change in U.S. policy, sometimes called the wet foot, dry foot policy, which among other things, allows a Cuban who makes it past the Coast Guard and other law enforcement agencies and sets foot on U.S. soil to remain in the United States and later qualify for citizenship. That was more than a decade ago and no signs of mass migration since. But in light of current international events, in particular reports of the declining health of Fidel Castro, the lessons of the past are very much a topic of the present. If the event, uh, something happens worldwide, let's say Castro opens his borders again, or some rumor goes around that some, for some reason we're accepting people into the United States, which we don't. What we do is we have a plan called Operation Vigilant Sentry. In a nutshell, if we have an indication of a mass migration, I'll pick Cuba, although it does apply to any nation in the Caribbean, we send everything down and we deter and we tell them you are not coming out. We have a ring around you and we're very public about it. There's nothing classified about this. We are ready and we are going to get you and we are not going to let you in. Okay? If we're going to solve your crisis internationally, we're going to take care of that, but at the same time our force is there and we're using all the lessons from Operation Able Manor and Able Vision. We've exercised this uh, and it's a good plan and it's ready to go. <laughs> In Puerto Rico, Coast Guard crews are ready for Operation Vigilant Sentry, should a mass migration onto the island occur. Only time will tell whether illegal attempts to enter this U.S. territory will intensify. In the end, as we've all worked collectively, we think we've made it safer uh, for the American public. We think we are doing the right thing in prosecuting cases that need to be prosecuted. And most importantly, we think we're saving lives by deterring those who are attempting to cross. While the number of migrant interdictions off the shores of Puerto Rico is down, there are several factors that could affect that tempo. Things like economical and political situations in nearby countries, or any future changes to U.S. immigration laws. Whatever the case, the U.S. Coast Guard, true to its motto, stands always ready to respond. I'm Master Sergeant Daniela Marcus, and this has been Recon.